Hello. It is Valentine's Day 2015. And just pretty much bored. Got nobody except the only girl in my life as well, right here. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just pretty much bored today. So I thought maybe I'd just get a vlog in, maybe. Um, it's, well, 310 right now. Um, don't know if Chinese restaurant will call me in tonight or not. If it's one of them situations where if they get busy, they'll call me. And usually if they will, it's going to be last minute and usually right around 5 o'clock. Instead of telling me just come in at 5, it's we'll call you. So then I have to scramble to hurry up to get ready and go. So, I mean, if they call me tonight, that's fine. That means money for me. Um, I am back doing the Chinese restaurant for a little bit. Because I told Fitzgibbons to shove it up the ass, pretty much. I got tired of all their bullshit. Always changing the rules. Stuff like that. Things we were doing for five or six months, all of a sudden we were told we were doing it wrong. And it's just really ridiculous. I mean... Didn't get very many complaints from the other departments, so how the hell were we doing it wrong? And then, like, the board of directors and whatever you want to call it, the higher-ups, basically, the way I view the place is... It seems to me they don't care about the patients. Nonetheless, they're employees. All that matters to them, yeah, they're a non-profit hospital. But it seems to me all that they care about is their political and personal views. So, I mean, if they don't like something... They don't want you to do it, even on your personal time, or whatever like that. Like, they are dead set, set against smoking and smoking-like things. Like, I mean, they had, they've, for years, the campus has been a non-smoking campus, you know, and basically... How it was is on your breaks, if you wanted to smoke, you had to clock out to leave the property to go smoke. And then the vape pens and stuff like that came out. Well, they viewed those as, oh, that's smoking. And several of us were like, uh, no, it's not. It is legally not considered smoking. We've done research on that. We showed them the research on that. And some people, some of us were trying to get a forum set up with the board. And we're, I wasn't one of them, but my friend was. And he was flat out denied it. Nope. We, they basically said, nope, we don't want to talk to you about it. Now, what kind of bullshit is that? And they held a got the regular in a regular meeting, and right then and there, basically flat out decided, well, that it's considered smoking and that's considered part of it, so can't do that on property. And at the same time, then decided. That the 15 minute break, two 15 minute breaks they were giving us, 
we can no longer clock out and leave the property on. That we were to, when it came time for the breaks, we were to go to the cafeteria for them breaks. So, basically they were saying, yeah, you can have a break, but you can't do what you want on it. And as soon as I heard that, I took my badge off, dropped it on the desk, and said, I quit, walked out. And then, of course, I guess the second in command, I'm not going to say his name, said he wanted to be a wise ago. Bye! I'm sitting there going, yeah, fine, go ahead. Fuck you, too. So... Yeah, I am not going to be a little pawn in their fucking political agendas and shit like that. Fuck that. They can kiss my ass. So, I gave that up. I mean, it just, the stress and the irritation was not worth the pay and the benefits. I mean, the pay was decent and... I was able to get fairly cheap insurance that was decent, but it just it wasn't worth it. The insurance couldn't pay enough money to keep me alive because the stress would have just killed me. So, and I don't miss it at all. I really don't. I mean... When I went in that day, my stress level was already sky high, and as soon as I just, I, I just quit, my stress level went bye-bye. So, I don't really give a fuck about that place. So. Oh. Let's see here. As you can see, you know. And... Well, tell by the day. It's still winter, but, um, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me, it has been, uh, trying to think the best way to put it, um, it has been an extremely mild winter. So far, this, well, I guess it, it's supposed to be 2014-2015 winter season. And so far, um, we've had times where it was damn cold. But it stayed dry, really. And... We've had quite a few streaks of unusually warm weather, like just, eh, just about a week ago or so. I mean, we had, we're at the end of like a week and a half period where we were like in the 40s and 50s and 60s for highs. <clears throat> and getting rain and stuff like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so far for this winter season, we have gotten a total of two and a half inches of snow for the entire winter so far. And, um, in fact, tomorrow on the 15th, they're, uh, we're supposed to have what's called an Alberta Clipper swing through, which, I mean, it's what the name says, it comes up, comes down from Alberta, Canada, and it just clips the area, and quickly moves through, and they're calling for us to get out of that one to one and a half, maybe two inches of snow out of that, which is falling right under what we've been getting recently anyway, I mean... We've been getting, like, an inch. I mean, <laughs> when I say we've had two and a half inches so far, that was, I mean, I haven't seen the official four marshal 
but the map I saw that was given the so far totals listed Blue Lick, Missouri, which is odd, because, I mean, Blue Lick is where, you know, that's where my mom and my uncle grew up, you know, which is about six miles south of here. So, I mean, yeah, about two and a half, I'd say we got three. Because, I mean, about both both times it snowed, we got about an inch and a half each time. So I'd say we bet about three. So we're going to probably get another one. It'll jump up our total to four and a half, probably. And I'm not going to complain about that. And um, not worried about being a drought because, yeah, we've only had three inches of snow. But those times where it was warm, we've had systems move through where we've had rain. So, I mean, we're getting, it seems to me, the normal amount of precipitation we're supposed to get. It's just not coming in the normal form for this area for this time of year. I mean, granted, if it had been cold enough, those rainstorms would have probably gave us, you know, five, six inches of snow at a time. So we'd be at average snowfall. But since it's been warm, it's came as rain. And I'm not going to complain about that one bit. I like it like this. This is a satisfactory winter for me so far. Snows a little bit. Enough to kind of make things a little pretty. Kind of makes the roads a pain in the butt a little bit. Of course, that all depends on your vehicle and your tires and stuff like that. Which is going to be a segue to my next little subject here that I just thought of. <laughs> and that's speaking of this in the winter. Uh, <laughs> I've noticed the past couple of little snowstorms. Like that, the very first one we got. Um, which we didn't get our first snowfall until January, by the way, mid-January, and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it was, um, brain's farting here, sorry. Um, it was one of those cases where we had a nice streak of warmer weather. And then one of those where at the end of it, we had a little front or whatever you want to call it, move through with moisture. You know, it was going to bring cold with it. So it started out with a lot of rain the day before. I mean, all, quite a bit of rain, which would have, if it had been cold enough would have equaled several inches of snow but it started out as rain and then over the night overnight it changed over to snow and then moved on well that created you know it's no a lot of slush underneath the snow and this car does not like slush. Like, areas where the roads were treated, you know, and stuff like that, you know, melting, just all slushy and all that stuff like that. Or the side streets, you know, that didn't get treated but had traffic, you know, it turned slushy, you know, and stuff like that. Well, the rear end of this car is, I guess, so light that in that slush the ass end wants to get squirrely so I gotta take it slow and everything like that because otherwise the faster I get then I'm trying to fight it because that ass ends want to slide to the side a little bit and I've got to constantly correct so I'm thinking you know in cases like that I mean 
I don't really have the room to do it because I keep stuff in my trunk. But the solution I would think of is something that you really don't do with a front-wheel drive car, and that's put weight in the back. <laughs> um, but otherwise, so far, what little snow we've got, she does good in it. I have no problems taking off or stopping. It's just that slush in that rear end. Um... But, yeah, you know, like I was saying before, we'll probably get about an inch, inch and a half of snow this tomorrow. So, and I'll probably be dry, delivering in that tomorrow because they won't want to. And I I told them, you know, we're supposed to get snow Sunday. You want, I'll work for y'all. <laughs> so, cause I don't mind delivering in the snow. I ain't that big, especially that much. Or, you know, small snows. I've delivered in way worse. <laughs> of course, in the way worse, you know, I've had to go and get the Mountaineer and do it and that. You know, or, you know, in some cases, I've, you know, found that, that, that Buick did pretty damn good. That, that car was a fucking tank in the snow. Um, I was plowing through stuff that other people could not get through, and I'm just going plowing right on through. It's like, good God. <laughs> Put a fucking plow on the front of the son of a bitch, and there we go. I can make some more money. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't mind delivering the snow. Some people tend to tip better. And then, of course, you know, you've got the assholes who, no matter what it is, they ain't going to tip you. They don't give a flying fuck. All right, there's somebody I know, and he's told me that you know, he don't tip unless they go, you know, they impress him. And I'm sitting there thinking, mm-hmm. And it, it, I didn't say anything, but that really pissed me smooth fuck off. I'm sitting there going, yeah, these people go out in dangerous conditions And yeah, they may be a little late getting to you, and just because that you're not going to tip. But yet they got out in this stuff to bring you your late, your lazy ass food, because you don't want to get out in it, and you don't want to tip them unless they bedazzle you or whatever you or you know whatever you want to say, however you want to say it. You know, that's just that's wrong. So, um, oh yeah, there, yeah, there's just people out there that don't give a flying fuck what it is like outside. They just want their food in their suit. They don't give a fuck how, how you had to get there or, or if it's freaking freezing cold outside. It's people like that that really irritate me. And it's, and, they just seem like the low lives of humanity to me. And it ain't because, you know, I'm doing the job, you know, that I think this. I've thought that before I even had to do it. I've always tipped. I know these people work. I knew before I even had to do it that those people work hard. And stuff like that. And that they don't get much in pay. Um, let's see, what else can I talk about here? Oh, um, I guess continuing the bitching and moaning about things here for a little bit. Um, our McDonald's here is on the corner of a very busy street. An intersection, basically. And, of course, the drive through line area isn't all that great big, you know, the circle on around. And, you know, they get busy in the line, you can get up to the street. Well, then there's these people who 
I say they don't have a brain in their head because then they'll sit there in the middle of the street there with the turn signal on waiting for the vans to go on in obstructing traffic. That's stupid and actually against the law. But yet, when they do it, are there cops around? No. And then the few cops that do go around, they don't give a fuck. They'll move on. They don't see anything wrong with it. Which is stupid, because these people are obviously breaking the law. And I know it's against the law, because I've had a cop tell me this. So, yeah, it just irritates the fuck out of me when they do that crap. And like if there's one in there, I'll lay on my horn and I'll constantly lay on, lay on it, not let off until they move. I make them move. It just ticks me off. It's very inconsiderate. And this minivan that's coming into camera here or not minivan, it's PT Cruiser or as I like to call them PT Losers, they're ugly, I don't like them was over there kind of going around in circles over by the pool there in that parking lot down there I was sitting here watching them as I was talking I was wondering what the hell they were doing. Kind of odd, but okay. I guess to each their own on that. Mm. Um, let's see. What else can I say? Well, um... Back in 2012, um, I had gotten a notice, well, actually I need to go further back than that. Back in 2007, I was well, working in Boonville for McRentals when they got or sold to a, another company. And me and my friend were, um, I guess you'd say grandfathered on into the new one, you know, the new owners and the company said, well, you've been with this place for this long, then you've been with us for this long. So they verbally told us they were grandfathering us in. And we went from making like, six something an hour to thirteen dollars and seventy two cents an hour and we just thought that was the bee's knees I mean well yeah that's an old saying you know we just we thought that was great so you know I thought oh fine that's fantastic you know I'll can get me a go get me a new car and have it paid off like in no time so I went out and I bought me a new car I mean, it really wasn't what I really wanted too much, but it was a new car. I mean, it was a 2007 Toyota Corolla S. It had seven miles on it. And, you know, it wasn't all that great of a car. You know, it's Toyota. Woo. Um, I mean, I just thought that was great. I'm driving a brand new car. You know? And, um... You know, things were going good, and just out of nowhere, you know, they got, got screwed out of my job. Which meant, boom, I was screwed with this car. And eventually, you know, they, after telling them, you know, hey, I mean, I can't afford it. If you need it, come get it. I was not trying to keep the car without paying him. I told him, come and get it. I can't afford it. And eventually, they were like, after a while, like, okay, 
finally, so I took it to the dealership where I had originally got it so that they can arrange for the pickup of it. And then, you know, the balance was sent to collection agencies, stuff like that. Blah, 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 you know, wanting ridiculous. Well, here's what we can do. You can give us half of this, half of it now, and then make that. And I'm sitting there going, are you fucking stupid? I couldn't even afford the regular payments on the car. What makes you think I could afford to send you half the balance? And that's, oh, that's why collection agencies are so fucking dumb. I mean, the majority of the people who have to deal with the collection agencies couldn't afford it. And that's why they stopped making payments and sent it back or whatever, you know, the ones who did send it back. Now, I see, you know, the ones that are just trying to keep it, you know, and just saying, you know, shoo, 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 you know. But the people who are tr were trying to make it right, like I was, I was trying going to try to make it right. And the people who try to make it right, they they can't do it because these people want ridiculous terms. Well, eventually it went through several collection agencies, I think, and then went back to Toyota Lexus Financial, I guess, and. They wrote it off, and I got a notice of um, debt cancellation or whatever it's called. I forgot what it is, but they basically <coughs> said as far as they were concerned, the debt was gone. It didn't exist. So... Um, and the grand total of it was six thousand nine hundred, I think it was, that was forgiven. Because, I mean, when they got the car, they turned around and they sold it at auction. And it sold at auction for fourteen thousand dollars. At auction. And it even had a little ding in the door. Because you know how things go. You can't have anything nice without somebody else fucking it up for you. You know, sitting in the parking lot, you know, somebody hit my door and put a ding, uh, put a dent in the door. So even with a little dent in the door, it sold for $14,000. Which meant that, as far as they're concerned, I didn't owe that, that money. So then... They took fourteen thousand dollars off of what I'd owed, and that was what I owed left was six thousand nine hundred, I think, because I was also from a previous vehicle because I was upside down in that vehicle, and they tacked that on. So I think actually, <laughs> what they sold the car for at auction was probably just shy of what it was to begin with. So the six thousand nine hundred was basically the other the previous vehicle. So, but they forgave that, so I was like, okay, well now, I don't know how this works, I'll just go to H&R Block, and, um, just have them deal with it, plus I had an idea of maybe trying to claim my mileage on my taxes, which didn't make all that much of a difference, so I decided not to do it. It made like a, I mean, the deductions on it wouldn't have made much of a difference in my thing. So, so I had them do it, and they did an insolvency thing, basically where I say that at that particular time, what I had you know, the value of the stuff I had, and basically all I had was that Buick. And they determined that, H&R Block basically determined that it was worth about 600 bucks. So, on 
that they said that basically only 600 bucks of that 6900 or whatever could be taxed uh, I mean, uh, some of you who know about taxes and stuff like that, you know, you you know what I'm trying to t talking about, but um, there's that PT cruiser again. I saw it go back by, and now it's made a loop back around and coming back by again. Are they just cruising the park? What are they doing? I mean, yeah, I've cruised the park before. I mean, it's, they're bored, but okay, it's all right. But um. Basically, they're stating that I didn't have to pay taxes on all that. I only had to pay taxes of $600 because that's all I pretty much had to me. So, did that and we sent it in. You know, the proper form, supposedly. Well, um... About July of last year, um, um, oh, when that did them taxes, it was 2012. I can't remember if I mentioned that or not, but yeah, that was back in 2012. Well, last year, and about July, I think, somewhere around that, I get a letter from the IRS. I'm like, okay, what is this? And the last time I got a letter from the IRS, it was them saying that they think I could qualify for the earned income credit, which turned out I could. So they actually were telling me, hey, you can get some more money back. So I thought, okay, well, maybe it's that again. And after opening it and I saw it, I was like, what? And they had stated that I did not claim that um, debt forgiveness, debt forgiveness of debt. And it said that I owed them 960 bucks. And I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, hell no. So. <clears throat> excuse me. So I've been going to H&R Block now since I got that letter a few times off and on. You know, give them time to try to work on it. Well, finally, last this past Monday, um, well, actually, before that, the week before, the Monday before last, you know, I made an appointment to go in, you know, because she's like, she tried a lot of things through that time and just had no luck, and decided that we were just going to have to call the IRS, but the IRS wouldn't talk to them without me there, so... Made an appointment for the Monday before last. We go in there, and we're on the phone. And basically, I don't, I forgot how it was worded, but she had it on speakerphone. Uh, the computerized, or, you know, auto. Well, I had done a vlog a little ways back, um, when it was still nice. And... When I was doing it, the device ran out of memory, so it stopped recording, so I had to switch it to the SD card and um, continue on on that. Well, after I did that, the SD card went bad, so that second part went bye-bye. And... I can't remember where I was at because since then I had to change phones because that phone finally the screen went out on it so I had to claim the insurance on it and get me another one and when that happened I had to take all the stuff off of that phone and put it on the computer including that video so I don't know where I left off on that but um, reason why I'm kinda getting back to it 
Now it's because it's a decent day again. You know, I just don't want to be inside doing that, you know, do a vlog inside or whatever. It's kind of, well, it just sucks for me. I can't be, like, cooped up in a house. I don't, I get cabin fever too easily. And on a nice day like this, I just can't pass it up. I mean, it's like 53, 54 degrees right now. And... They're calling for, well, the bottom drop out of weather here today, in fact. I mean, by tonight, it's supposed to drop off and the system's supposed to move through. That's going to, by the time it moves through, will be cold enough for to be snow. And they're only calling for about a dusting to an inch. But still, we're going from 54 degrees down. It's supposed to drop down to 17 or have a high in, like, the low 20s. And low is supposed to drop down to like 17 tonight, something like that. So, I just thought I'd go ahead and just try to continue on now. Wish I could remember what I'd covered and stuff like that. But, I know one thing that hasn't been covered. Um, not yesterday, but the day before yesterday. I decided to quit using those El Cheapo vape pens, stuff like that. And I went out and bought me a supposedly a good quality one. Paid 65 bucks for this setup here from Aqueous Vapor. And with adjustable voltage and I find actually having it on the lowest voltage 3.0 suits me best even though it can go all the way up to 6 volts but the coil in this couldn't handle that you'd pop the coil real quick it's only meant for like up to 4 volts I think so so hopefully you know this is a case of you get what you pay for. You know, you pay more, you're going to get better quality, hopefully. So, and I go through a little more juice with this because of the way it just does it. So it, like, takes more juice. It, it, it evaporates more juice than the cheaper ones. So I go through juice a little faster, but on the plus side, the battery itself on the charge has lasted me two days. Unlike the others where I can barely get through a day. So that hopefully will pan out better for me and maybe actually help me permanently kick the regular cigarettes and stuff like that. Although, as soon as that trade embargo finally goes through or finishes being done or gets canceled fully and we're able to get Cuban cigars in here, I'm going to have a Cuban cigar. I got to. Gotta try it. It's supposed to be the best cigars in the world and all that and so hard to get, you know. Growing up, Mm. hearing that, you know, Havana Cuban cigars, supposed to be the best in the world. So, you know, I gotta see what the hype is all about. Um, let's see. I don't really know, I mean, the temperatures, you know, we had a decent amount of a little snow and ice fall, fell, you know, about, I didn't get all that much the last time, but as you can see, you know, where it wasn't treated at all, you know, it's still remaining, even though we've had a few days above freezing, but today's the day where it's just starting to melt, where there was a lot more last night. 
around town and stuff than there is at this time today. Yeah, it kind of sucks that memory card had to go c crap on me because I just can't remember what I was talking about the last time. And I was going, I mean, I had no problems th really thinking of everything, and now here I am struggling, which freaking sucks. But, um... Well, I know just recent, this past Sunday, there was the Oscars. You know, that's always a big topic. Well, and if I remember correctly, was, I don't pay too much attention to that. I'm like, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, yeah, people who do exemplary, exemplary, exemplary work, I, I can't pronounce today t either, exemplary work, getting rewarded for that ex exemplary work, I mean, yeah, that's great, you know, you know, that's always saying, yeah, I was the best. But it really doesn't affect me all that much, so it's not that big of a deal to me. So, um, but from, so I didn't pay attention, but I believe Birdman won Best Film. And I hear it is a very good film, so I'm going to check that out, because I've always kind of liked Michael Keaton. I mean, you, I mean... I think it's pretty safe to say that you can't not like Michael Keaton. <laughs> I mean, he's just a very likable person, and he's a very good actor. And, of course, you know, he excels in comedy, you know. And this movie is supposed to be very witty. You know, kind of right up his alley, you know, a good mixture of comedy and drama, so I'm going to Try to give it a shot. One of these days, I mean, I gotta be in the right mood to watch a movie. You know, so. Um. I had something popping in my head when I was talking about that, and I done forgot what, I, <laughs> what it was. Um. Let's see. can't remember brain fart I have a lot of those um let's see I'll move the camera around for you all a little bit so you can look around a little bit yeah <laughs> here we'll go up and over the top for you there you go <laughs> but um yeah, I mean, you just can't not like, oh, yeah, um, you know, it, it, Michael Keaton, you know, it, it, it's kind of like, um, Robin Williams was. I mean, very, very, very funny guy, but could pull off the serious stuff, too. So, I mean, you know, actors like that, you can't help but like, I mean, you can't hate them. Because, I mean, it's just sheer talent. Um, so, I guess that's my little take. And I don't really know too much about what happened this year's, year's Oscars so far. I mean, I know the Grand Budapest Hotel was up for Best Picture and didn't win it. But I did see it. And I can tell why it was nominated. It was a very good movie. Quite quirky. D done very weirdly how... Basically, most of the movie was 
done in the 4-3 aspect ratio, as in basically regular CRT TV viewing, in a way. And then just a couple of scenes where it would go to the 16 by 9, or, you know, whatever it is, the widescreen, for just a few scenes. You know, for... So... It was a very quirky movie, and I liked it. I heard something off over here. Leaves shuffling. Don't know what it was. But. Um. So I can see why it got nominated. Oh, there's people over there. Well, I'll continue this later. I don't want to see people talking to myself. <laughs> okay, before I get interrupted. So yeah, let's talk about the Oscars here, and, um, well, had a little time to think, and, um, continuing on the Oscars thing, I remember back in, uh, I forgot exactly what year, but, um, when As Good As It Gets was up, I had just come out and stuff like that, and it was Oscar time for it. Of course, yeah, we're going way back here, you know, like, what is it, the 90s? I think it was 98? I think it was something like that, 96, 98? I know it couldn't have been 97 because that was Titanic, which, bleh, oh, God. It was good to watch once, and then it's just, yeah. Mm. So, um, but <laughs> as good as it gets came out, and it won. I believe it won, yeah, I think. I, well, my memory could be wrong. But I believe it won. Helen Hunt won Best Actress, I believe. It was winning. and It was a big winner, I believe, on that. But I remember Greg Kinnear getting screwed over. I think he should have but won Best Supporting Actor. He did such a good job in that movie, and he didn't win an Oscar for that, and I thought that was a load of bullshit. I mean, he did a fantastic job in that movie. And for him to get snubbed like that is just wrong. Although, I mean, I know ju just getting nominated, you get, and that looks just like my old car up there, I used to have a 05 Malibu, but just like that, the exact same color, same rims and everything, I don't know if that could be my old one or not, I mean it was pretty common color for that make and model, anyway, but as I traded off in Sedalia, so I mean it could have come back here to Marshall, um, but, back on subject here, yeah, he just got, it was bullshit, he got snubbed for that, I always, I've always felt bad, mad about that, I mean, I just didn't think that was fair, so, um, I'm waiting to see if I can get on here at the local China Mart. Um, <laughs> um, uh, back on a Walmart, Walmart, hopefully I can. That way it's a steady job and I can stay out of delivery. Or I should say get back out of it. Because I could probably get on at Domino's easily, but I don't really want to. Um... Let's see.
course, I've said it before many times, but I'm so sick of brown. <laughs> I can't wait for um, spring to get back here and everything start turning green again. <laughs> Oh, this tree has got some reddish buds on it or something, or the leaves, well, the leaves that were on it turned red and they just stayed on it, something like that, I can't quite tell. So, um, ooh, seeing that Grand Prix reminds me, <coughs> excuse me, I've noticed in this town, there are three different Chevy Impalas, and they all have been, had their, the wheels changed, and there goes that Malibu again, um, their wheels changed, and they've put on rims that go to Pontiac's. There's one, and, oh, and they all look weird to me, because I know those rims don't go to that vehicle. And that kicks in in my OCD thing for me, you know. And I'm, it just doesn't look right. There's one that has the wheels that go to the Pontiac, that are shared by the Pontiac Grand Prix and Firebird, which are the five-spoke aluminum rims that kind of go up to a point. It's kind of hard to describe. I'll probably, in editing, I'll throw a picture up. And then there's another one, another Impala, which I know exactly where it lives, as I've seen it parked there many a times, and it's where they live. Um, that have that is shared by the Grand Prix and the Aztec, which I will pop up a picture to. And then there's another Impala that has the rims that go to. The Grand Am GT2 and Bonneville. It's shared by those two. That Impala, I can't quite tell what it looks like it's the proper rims, but that isn't one of them, huh? <laughs> um, so, you know, seeing stuff like that, it kind of like, it throws me off. I'm like, really? Seriously? <laughs> Because it doesn't look right to me. Because I know that those don't go to that car. That they were designed for a different vehicle. And I mean, I've seen other vehicles around town that used to be like, I think there was... Oddly enough, there was, I believe, a Ford Explorer. One of the 90s models. And I actually think it had Mustang rims on it. And I'm going, what the fuck? <sighs> so, I mean, you know, I mean, you can do that on, you know, usually, you know, rims that were designed for Fords will fit most Fords. Same with GM vehicles. If they're from around the same year, or same um, generation area, usually. And then, of course, sometimes there's some older generations that fit modern cars and vice versa. So. But if I know those rims go to a different vehicle, then it just, it, it drives me nuts. <laughs> and yes, I do realize, and I've met it many times, I am crazy. So... <laughs> let's see here Thursday I got an appointment to get my taxes done 
which is well tomorrow. Um, so I gotta go get that done. I already, I know I touched up touched on this the tax thing on uh, the previous one that was that survived. So um, can't wait till that's done. That way I can get all the stuff done for her eye that I need done. Um, as things are kind of going a little bit south, I mean, I think I filmed that before this happened, so, um, the tensioner pulley went bad, and that'll probably, um, creep up on the, um, video potpourri, actually, but, um, yeah, the tensioner pulley went bad, so, it, and it split the belt perfectly down the middle along the entire circumference of the belt. So it made it look like it had two little belts on it. Well, now also the alternator is going bad. It still works and does its job. It's just noisy as hell. And can get real noisy. Especially when you're speeding down, when it's winding on down. Like when you're going and then you hit the brakes and slow down the, and the RPMs of the motor go down so it spins the alternator slower. And that's when it starts making louder noises. It's on the wind down. <clears throat> so, I gotta get that done Tuesday. Got an appointment for that. It's only going to cost me like 80 bucks total. I mean, yeah, granted, I could get me an alternator and put it on myself, but I hate dealing with serpentine belts. They're a pain in the ass. At least to me. I mean, if the weather was going to stay nice, you know, yeah, I probably would go ahead and just do it myself, but... The weather isn't so, I'm not going to stand out in the cold and work on that stuff, you know, touching cold metal, you know, freezing my hands. No, I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> so, I'm going to have somebody else do it. Um, let's see. Uh, I know that, um... Gas prices have been slowly climbing back up. They were down to, I think, one... I think they... At the lowest, it peaked at 178, something like that. I can't remember. Um, but yesterday it was at 203, and I should have filled up yesterday instead of today, because today it jumped, it, it jumped overnight to 209. So... Hopefully gas won't go up too much, but it probably will now because of that. Especially because of that um, Exxon refinery blowing up here in the States here. And, you know, that's just a perfect excuse to, uh, to, for them to jack up the prices. You know, they don't think of... I mean, granted, I can't remember if anybody was killed in that. I'm not sure. I think there was, and that's very sad. But the way the oil companies think, oh, the plant's going to be down. We got to jack up prices now, which is bullshit. So that will, yeah, they'll just raise the prices up because of that. Even though they still make record fucking profits, no matter what the price is. They can make plenty, plenty of profit. They can make hundreds of millions of dollars in profits, having the gas at a dollar ten. But no, they say they can't afford that. Because they're not happy with hundreds of millions of dollars in profits. They want billions of dollars of profits. Because the CEOs are greedy. Oh, 
Oh, um, on this phone, which, um, the day before yesterday, I put the claim in, and I put it in at, like, uh, I think I finished it at 7.45 p.m., you know, and they said, okay, you should expect your new device on twelve on uh, two twenty four the twenty fourth, which was yesterday, and being seven forty almost eight o'clock at night on the twenty third, I thought, yeah, right, they ain't gonna do that. They won't. They'll show up on the twenty fifth. Well, about four thirty, doorbell rung. It it came. I was surprised by it. So, you know, I got it. And they had sent another SIM card with it, which threw me off. So I went to the Verizon store to check on that. And they said just to keep it, just in case it's a backup. You don't need, you can use your current SIM card. I'm like, okay, good. So, got the phone all set up. And then as soon as I got back home, first thing I did, I went to the drawer and grabbed the protective case that I had originally bought a long time ago that arrived the day after the phone got hurt or damaged. A day late and $500 short. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's how it went. I ordered a case, protective case for it. Okay, great. And the day before the case arrives, the phone hits concrete and... <laughs> so, yeah, I put the case on quick. And... I don't know. There it is. There's my ugly mug. Uh, yeah. It's got the cushiony right here and on the other side over here. And then this is more solid here because the purple and this backing comes off as two pieces and you slip this side this on first and then you snap this on so yeah if I had had this yeah it would have been fine you know because I mean it landed you know like that when it hit the concrete and of course, if I had this, you know, it'd have been fine. So, hmm. yeah, cases are important. I wish they would make Nerf or do a case for phones like they did for the Nintendo DS XL. Uh, so, yeah, they should do for phones too. That's a fantastic case. I've seen one. They're awesome. Uh. Train going past. Let's see. I really can't think of anything else right now. I mean, you know, I got that fate pen in Sedalia, so I made a trip to Sedalia the other day, you know. I, that's where I had to go to get it. Which is better than Columbia. Because that place, you know, they did start in like Columbia. And now they've got a few stores and one in Sedalia, which is fantastic. Now, so instead of having to drive 60 miles to Columbia, and then 60 miles back, you drive 30 miles to Sedalia and 30 miles back. It's half the trip. So, that's kind of good. That's fairly close. Um, well, 
I mean, this video is going to be pretty much long enough as it is. And this asshole needs to slow the fuck down. Doing freaking probably looks like 35 and a 15. Here comes another speeding asshole. Slow the fuck down, you retard. You're gonna kill somebody. The reason why it's 15 through here. Stupid people. <sighs> You know, I wish it was legal to take out stupid people. But then, you know, if you did that, then the world's population would probably be very, very, very small. Um, <laughs> ugh. But, yeah, this video is going to be long enough as it is, so I think I'm going to end it here. So, thanks for watching.